we are we are we doing the thing? Yes, we're live. Hooray. All right. Good evening. Tonight on my art stream, I'm gonna be working on an Age of Night page. This is going to be chapter 22, page 21. Um I'm gonna try not to hit the camera too many times. I can't make any promises. So I already have my page all laid out. All of my panels are already marked out as are all of my perspective grids because those are kind of boring and tedious to do ahead, while you guys are watching. So I try to do them ahead of time. I have my thumbnail off to the side so that I can see what I'm supposed to be doing. That page right there. So I just have that kind of clipped up on my drafting table out of frame so that I can reference it. I also, on my computer, have an old, old page of Age of Night at this point brought up so that I can see what things are supposed to look like because uh, this is a re this page is the beginning of a return to a scene that a setting that we have not been at for a really long time, as in like the entirety of the last volume of the comic, we were not there. So I don't really remember what it looks like. I was thumbnailing it and I was like, I don't think this is right, but I'm just gonna kind of put some basic shapes in here and figure it out later. And big surprise when I went and looked it up in my archives, I was like, nope, got that wrong. Because it's been a while. So I'm trying to follow my perspective grid here as I get this building knocked in. So following my perspective grid, every this side of everything is following this set of perspective lines, the vanishing point that's somewhere off over here. This set side, these sides are following this set of lines. And everything just kind of starts with basic boxes and follows from there. Checking my reference off screen. I've got like a fence over here. I've got a road that comes through here. That seems kind of wide for a road because that's an entire building. So let's make that a little bit, a little bit smaller. That's better. All right. What else do we have? We've got a wood pile over here and a tree. in this general area and some shrubs and about in the center there's a door and a path that leads to it from the road okay that's and over here is more trees Trying to get everything in the basic area that it belongs. Oh, there's like another, there's another path or some a road or something that goes over here. Hmm. Okay. All right. This can be more. More vegetation on this side of the road so that it's not just like nothing. Uh, this building has a couple of little dormers here. I think that's the right architectural term, right? With the window that sticks out of the roof line. The dormer, right? And if, if, if anybody knows, feel free to comment because I don't remember what they're called. I think they're called dormers. 
I could be wrong. Windows, windows. All right, that's the basic shapes of that now. Uh, nobody has made any comments yet, but for real, if you know what they're called, I, by all means, please let me know. My husband's in the background laughing at me. You might be able to hear him. You might not. And we've got a cart here. And it's being drawn by a horsey who's going to be up here. Who's just going to kind of be a horsey blob for right now. Someone jumping off the back. Who looks kind of too big? Yeah, too big. I'm gonna have to fix that. You're too you're too large. Let's make you smaller. I mean, there's a certain extent to which you can kind of fudge it, but she was clearly way too big. That's slightly better. Probably still actually too big if I were to measure it, but closer. It doesn't look as wrong. It's a little bit more believable than it was the first time. Stop. Stop with the jiggling there, camera. Okay, I'm going to rough in the next one because I've got a, I've got this a pretty good basic rough up here. I can see that people are watching. You can say hi. I love to answer questions and just chit chat. They don't even have to be pertinent to what I'm doing. It's fine. <laughs> if you've watched any of these in the past, sometimes we get really off topic. That's okay. Oh, no, this is too big again. I keep on wanting to make this figure too big for what I, I'm trying to do in these panels. Smaller. You'll get your close up later, I promise. All right, so there's a figure. I'm walking on a path to a door that doesn't need to be quite that high. That door's a little bit too tall. That's not like it. Windows are over here. And I'm pretty sure there's shrubberies on the outside, on either side of that. Check my reference image. Uh, uh, I, I can't see it. Hold on. No, that's too big. Oh my goodness. I'm struggling out of frame here. Nope, there's no shrubberies. The shutters get really close to the door though, so. Shutters. All right, and we've got an interior scene that I don't have reference pulled up for. I don't think I've actually shown this angle of this interior so previously, so I can kind of wing it. Let's 
as long as it makes some kind of sense with what the exterior looks like and isn't some weird TARDIS building where it's like that interior and that exterior do not make any sense together. So along with that, so if that's the doorway, so then the corner should be right here. There should be a window here. There's another window over there somewhere. So there's the big corner post is gonna be over here. Back wall. It's gonna be that's about waist tight. So there's a bar back here. Too deep. That's better. Far, trying not to lose my perspective grid. All right, that's the corner. That's the wall. You can kind of lightly erase that because that's all hidden. I'm gonna have a table with some people down here. table here. Figure kind of entering the doorway here. Bartender over here. Patron sitting on a stool, except he's like in the bar because I drew him too far forward <laughs> from the angle that this is at. Let's try that again. Let's have him not be fused with the bar. That's more like it. Various stools. Other people hanging out. Let's 
it's like always this trick of trying to make the space look populated without it being either too crowded or being too impossible to actually draw. Like getting things convincingly filled with just the right number of humans, I always find kind of tricky. Just the right number of figures to make the space look like people are actually in it. This guy's telling some kind of story and gesturing. In this particular instance, I don't want it to look terribly busy because it's a tavern in like the middle of the day. So there's a few people around, but not a lot. All right. Behind the bartender is going to have a couple of kegs. All right. Well, I think that kind of populates that space pretty well without it being too crowded. And coming down here, what are you, what are you, what are you do, what are you doing? What are you doing? Somebody's coming over and creeping over on my computer while I'm trying to stream from it. All right. Down here. Oh, look, the figure finally gets to be large. Hooray. Finally get to make you as big as you want to be. But there's a different figure I have to not make as large as it wants to be for some reason. <laughs> Trying to stay loose and get a really nice gesture because this character has a is, is very graceful. I want to keep her looking that way. kitchen doorway. Side of another 
patron at one of the tables in between them to kind of just to kind of remind and reinforce there's a bunch of other people here and these two aren't necessarily they're not alone right now which is important for their interaction that's coming up on this next couple of panels so now we have whoops I'll get this a little better in frame here it's down at the bottom so it's like the paper's rubbing up against my mic so I'm sorry for weird noises that might be creating close up now we've got close up face And close up, other face of, yes, we're in a crowded place where we can't speak to each other, but we have to try to get each other's attention, make some kind of eye contact here. All right, yay! All right, so now we're about, oh, we're only 20 minutes. Huh, that went actually a lot faster than I thought. We're only about 23 minutes in, and I have everything roughed in. So now I need to start tightening things up and getting closer to this being an actual penciled page. I guess I draw fast or something. I'm sure there are probably people who see what I draw and go, you draw fast, but not well. But I get it done, so to hell with them. All right. Shrubberies. Shrubberies here on the side of the road. I think this area is actually supposed to be wooded, so I guess this is just like the low vegetation right next to the road before you get into the bigger trees. I'll put a little piney tree in here. This is where I channel my inner Bob Ross and make my happy trees. I'll put some like some bracken over here too. There we go. All right. I'm going to curse myself for that later when I go to ink it. <laughs> like, past Amanda, what did you do? Why did you do this to me? I 
we make some itsy bitsy details of this figure jumping out of the back of this cart. All right, I'm gonna shorten, shorten that leg a little bit. Corny is quite short. That's better. Okay. And now we're gonna draw this little. We're just gonna keep it nice and tropey, and it's gonna be a hay cart. Here's its little wheels that look kind of wonky, but that's okay. And there's a big old pile of hay in the back of this hay cart. And a farmer up front driving his horse. Driving his horse. Leading his cart. Oh no, that means now I have to draw the horse. I'm not good at that. You hush back there. I'm struggling enough without your kibitzing. You tried drawing a horse. It looks like a dog. <laughs> it's, a, it's a dog horse. I don't know if the mane is even necessarily helping matters any. I know lots of horse people and they always get mad when they see horses that are not drawn super great, but they're hard, okay? Sorry. They have, my horses have greatly improved since I first started doing this comic. They were real bad then. Now they're only a little bad. So there's that. All right, I gotta look up my reference picture again that I have just out of frame. At least it looks like a 
at least it's recognizable as a horse-drawn cart. Just don't look too closely at the horse, and it will be fine. All right, looking at my reference. All right. the corner of this building and we've got a basic wooden fence here Basic wooden fence, and there's supposed to be some shrubs. This is grass, 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 grass. Not gonna go too crazy with that, but just to remind myself for later when I ink, because the inking is where I'll go crazy. trees over here and let's see there's more more shrubberies back over this way clean up a little bit of this placeholder type stuff Woods. So there's this whole thing that uh, we talked about quite a bit in back when I was studying comics at school. Um, especially we talked about it in uh, scripting class an awful lot, but it came up a few other times too in other classes. Uh, how you how this, this sort of shot that this first panel is, this sort of composition is known as an establishing shot because ugh, we borrow so much film language and I hate it, but it's called an establishing shot where it's, you're basically just showing, hey, this is where this scene is taking place. And we talked a lot in scripting class about how that was not like really a, actually a good shot to start something on. Um, because it's boring. Because starting with, hey, look at this building is most of the time really going to be boring and doesn't even necessarily convey much to your reader because um, the it's it's just a building. Like, what is this going to tell them? Like, even if it's even if it's starting with something like a, that establishes what the setting is. If it's something like a school or something like that, like you should know that from the first couple of shots that happen inside the building. You shouldn't have to show us the building. Like that should be clear from what's going on inside it anyway. 
and really we just focused on the fact that it was a dull choice and it's not a very engaging way to start anything because it's boring but the other part of it is that yeah you know you should that information should be conveyed by whatever happens immediately thereafter and for the most part i've kind of followed that advice because yeah if i'm just showing you the exterior of some place or some like big sweeping view but you don't know where that place is then what does that matter to you like what is what is that going to tell you you're just like, yep, that's the outside of a building. I, I know nothing about how I should be responding emotionally to this scene or what to expect now other than it's going to take place inside this big, ugly box. <laughs> like, even if it's a pretty box, it doesn't usually convey much. I mean, there can be exceptions to that, but for the most part, it's not really telling you much. Um, but why I would start a scene... This is in toward the end of a chapter, but it's the start of a separate scene from what came before. Why I would start a scene with that at this point in the story is that this is a place that the reader should be familiar with. And this is some place that a character is returning to, that they haven't been in a really long time. And the fact that they're returning there has a particular like story and emotional weight to it. Because if you remember what this place is, which if you've been reading the comic for the really long time that it's been running, you should remember this place. And then you should be like, oh, I know what's going to happen here because this person is coming to this place at this time. And that should actually help to build that anticipation as opposed to just, yep, that's a building I've never seen before. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, that that advice works most of the time. I don't even always adhere to it. I definitely started um, interlude three with an establishing shot. Um, I mean, sometimes it's just kind of what you got to do. Sometimes it's really like the only logical lead into a scene, but it's just that it's just that it's usually treated as a default and it doesn't necessarily do anything for a scene. So it's, just one of those choices you should actually think about instead of just going for it immediately, I guess is the point of that long ramble about the rule that I don't actually even follow. Rule. More grass. So if you're watching this, you may or may not recognize this building in this space yet. We literally haven't been in this space since the end of volume two, so that's your hint if you weren't entirely sure where it is but had an inkling. We were last here at the end of volume two, so, and I'm working on volume four now, so it's been a minute. And if you remember, where this is, and think you know what that means for the story, then you should leave a comment, and if you're right, you'll win a prize of me going, you're awesome, that's your prize. <laughs> I'm not going to promise you a real prize, because I'll probably forget to give it to you, because I have many things happening all the time. And I don't want to get your hopes up. All right, we've got little, little windows with little shutters up top here. Bigger windows with bigger shutters down here. That's still like really wonky. What is going on here? Okay, that's slightly better.
And we've got the door frame around the door. Doors have door frames. They're really easy to forget to draw, but they're there and they're important. Helps your door actually look like a door. lower ones actually have like glass panes because that's in the common area but they still have the big shutters and then there's all of this kind of Really. Because boy, don't I like to torture myself. And there's a sign over the door. What is on the sign? That is an excellent question. What is that? That just looks like a scribble. Dang it, past Amanda. I don't know what that scribble's supposed to be. Ugh. All right. I'll have to see if I can find a better reference shot or a note somewhere explaining what that scribble is. There's a scribble. <laughs> There's a sign above the door. There's something on it, but goodness knows I could not tell you what it is based on my terrible scribbly past drawing that I did. Oh, there's another part of the building there, too. Whoops. This is supposed to connect. Back here, there's a whole other part of the building. Okay, that makes sense. But this tree is blocking most of it, so that would explain why I couldn't, didn't see it right away. So, tree, big old tree, kind of covering the corner of this building too. Stop wiggling. You stop that. It's not helpful. All right. There's the other part of this. There's that. There's that. More stick framey goodness. This, this, and I need to make this wood pile. Because I like to drive myself crazy. Let's make all the little tiny logs. That's a great plan. I recently had to draw a bird's nest for a freelance assignment and I was like oh, I know what a bird's nest looks like and then I went to draw it and I was like no I don't and I looked it up and then I realized wow I really don't know how to draw this uh, yeah turns out that drawing a whole bunch of twigs woven together by birds is actually pretty darn challenging I figured out a way to make it passable, I think, but that one definitely snuck up on me.
cool. Hey, uh, sorry, I'm trying to see your username. Sletberg, thanks for joining me. I'm glad you think my drawing's cool. All right, I think there's more that's supposed to be like in the background back here. Oh yeah, there's a fence. Oh man, it's all coming back to me now. There's a little fenced in area back here, like a paddock area for livestock and other fun things. If you read the volume two bonus chapter, bonus short story. It's only like five or six pages or something. So there's that. I'm going to say that back here are more trees and shrubs. That is too big. Let's try that again. just so it doesn't look like it's just going on forever without ever without, without me having made a decision or resolved anything back there. There we go. Wow, I finished the first panel. Crazy. What time is it? It is 9.47. Okay. So we've got a little less than 15 minutes left. I try to only have these be about an hour because really how long are you going to watch me draw and listen to me ramble? And it's just kind of interesting to see how much I can accomplish in one hour. What? What? I know it's not about me. I'm hearing sighs of consternation and plastic hitting the table behind me because my husband is working on putting together Warhammer 40k minis. That's a foot, sort of. We've got this cloaked figure walking up to the door after jumping off the back of a hay wagon. door is like propped open apparently is how they're doing it according to what I've drawn in the past that's how that's done I think I used to have it propped open with a log Today it's propped open with a rock. Cause sure, why not? Oh, 
Well, that's so nice. Thanks, Slipberg. So, yeah, I always find watching other people draw really mesmerizing. That's part of why I do these art streams. I think it's pretty cool. Watching other people draw or ink. Occasionally, I do I ink on these streams as well. I usually do them about once a week. I fell out of it, doing it regularly for a little while there because life. I was doing a ton of like conventions and other events this fall, and I was busy almost every single Saturday, which made doing this basically impossible. But I'm trying to get back on doing it every Saturday evening around this time. So a lot of times I'll be drawing. Sometimes I'll be inking. I think inking is like the most satisfying thing to watch personally. It's super mesmerizing. I very often get sucked into like if there's a if there's like a video on Facebook or Instagram or anything of somebody drawing or inking or painting, I'm just like, ah, oh, I just instantly zone out and watch it. It could be like nine minutes long and I won't even notice. All of a sudden I'll look up and be like, what? <laughs> what happened? All the little architectural details, the frames on the windows and the frames on the shutters and then each of the little shutter slats. And then we've got this stick frame thing going on. Oh yeah, and I have to have that sign which would be pretty much very close to fully edge on but there you go that's a sign I'm just kind of fill this in So I remember it's supposed to be dark later. Also, even though I'm going to be inking this before too terribly long, probably in the next few days or so, I just like to remind myself what everything is supposed to be like. But also it helps me to make sure that the panel is working. Like that, okay, there is a good balance and placement of blacks. All right. Oh, we only have like five minutes left. Hold on, I'm going to sharpen my pencil real quick. with just my ridiculously basic little handheld pencil sharpener. This is, yeah, it's one of the ones you get for free with the Faber-Castell like pencil set, so. But they work so well. All right, well, while I'm working on filling in some of the details on this last panel here, I'm gonna do the thing where, you where I tell you about all the things so this that I've been working on, this is a page from my webcomic, Age of Night. Uh, this is chapter 22, page 21. You can find the whole thing so far on ageofnight.com. Um, I also have a Patreon, which is patreon.com slash ageofnight, or you can search for my name, Amanda Call. And if you follow me on Patreon, then, or, you know, support me on Patreon, then you get all of your Age of Night pages a week early. I also post um, things like the pencils ahead of time for certain tiers. You can also get free comics, which is cool. This guy is telling a story. But yeah, very basic Patreon tier. Even for just a dollar a month, you get all your Age of Night comics a week ahead, which is pretty cool in itself. And sometimes I'll do like special videos uploaded there or that sort of thing. Bonus content. 
you can also find me on Twitter at Age of Night and on Instagram at Amanda Call Art. And if you want to actually buy copies of Age of Night, you can do that um, through Amazon, through your local bookstore, because it's on wide distribution, so they can order it and sell it for you, sell it to you. Um, you can get it on Drive Through RPG in PDF form, and Drive Through Fiction and Drive Through Comics, if those are places that you're typically shopping anyway. It goes on sale there really frequently because my uh, my publisher there, Skirmisher, does lots of really great sales, so that's a good place to keep an eye on. Uh, yeah. And normally I would also talk about what conventions I have coming up, but it is the winter, so I do not really do any comic conventions in the middle of winter. I am going to be going to PAX Unplugged in a couple of weeks. Um, but I won't be selling comics there. I'll just be, I'll be working at the Game in a Curry booth for a few hours on a few different days. And I'll also just be wandering around and enjoying myself, which is a crazy concept for me at a convention where normally I'm just working the whole time. This guy's got kind of like a toad face going on and stringy hair. That's how he looks. Brr. Sad, stringy haired toad face guy. Uh, we're almost to the end of time. And yeah, if you want to catch more art streams, I do this eh, most weeks on Saturday nights or different days, times. I've jumped around a couple of times trying to find a good one that fits. So the best way to make sure that you catch them is to subscribe, like, do all the things that you have to do on YouTube to see the videos because they're always changing things and they don't make it easy. I had to specify that this, another recent change, I had to specify that this is, this video is not for children. I will likely curse. I think I already have this stream. I know that's not really what it's about. It's a legal thing, but I'm just saying. I may be drawing comics, but that does not mean it is intended for children. Oh, you need a drink, sir. That's a very fat drink. That's a very fat drink. Let me try that again. That looks a little better. There we go. All right. So it's now 9.59 at the beginning of this hour. All I had on this page were boxes for my panels and a perspective grid on three out of the six panels. And now I have two completed penciled panels one about a uh, uh, some of the way there. I don't know. What do you want to call that? Like 30% of the way there? Sure. We'll go with that. And three more that are roughed in. So they're off to a good start. All right. That will be it for this evening's art stream. Thank you everyone who came and hung out. And thank you so much if you made a comment. And I will see you guys all next week.